first step is to disconnect your battery. I just removed the negative side of this. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. You're gonna be messing with a lot of electrical systems and your fuel system, and you don't wanna mix these two together. Remove your shift knob and the nut below it. Remove these two Phillips head screws in your center console. Remove these two Phillips head screws on either side of your center console in the front. Normally you have to pry this window switch up to get to this Phillips head screw underneath it to remove the center console. I leave my screw out so I don't have to pry it up anymore and then I can get to this electrical connector below it. Show you how this works. Here's a Phillips head and I'm just gonna pop this out. Remove the NVH stuff that's probably giving me lung cancer. Remove these four 10 millimeter bolts around the shift turret. Underneath this, there are three more 10 millimeter bolts on the shifter. Remove these and the shifter should pull out. I wrap the metal part of the shift turret on the transmission with a plastic bag and some cheap rubber bands like this to keep stuff out. The next step is to remove your oil cap followed by your radiator cap. I'm using a lift to pull my engine, but you definitely don't have to. You can use 18 inch tall jack stands. And there are some things that are a little bit easier, like rolling around on a creeper on your back is more comfortable than having to reach over your head. So there are some benefits of just using jack stands. Once you get the car elevated, drain your coolant. Drain your engine oil. Remove your hood. This is a lot easier if you have two people, but you can do it yourself as well if you're really careful about not nicking up the corners. My Miata has a custom turbo, so there will be a couple of additional steps. I'm removing my heat shield here. If you don't have a turbo, don't worry about this. You can skip this step. Disconnect your O2 sensor. And the reason I'm mentioning this is because it's probably the most important sensor in your engine if you have a turbocharger. And if not, it's still really important. And you're about to remove the O2 sensor. If you have a turbo, you want to disconnect your downpipe from your turbo. And if you have a regular na naturally aspirated engine, you just want to disconnect the header bolts from the exhaust. Next step is to remove some of these stiffening brackets on the underside of the car. Remove as much of your exhaust as necessary. I'm gonna leave my muffler hanging back here, but I'm gonna take off everything else. In this part, you just wanna be careful with your O2 sensor. You don't wanna damage it, disconnect the connector, and just make sure you protect it as you take this pipe out. I'm removing this back section of the exhaust that has the resonator in it. Next up, remove this front cross frame brace. I think these are all 17 millimeter bolts. Remove the four drive shaft bolts by the diff. I used an impact with a swivel. You don't want your e-brake on and you don't want your car in gear so you can easily turn the drive shaft with your hand. I'm stashing a little plastic bag with some rubber bands up here in case when I pull the drive shaft, a lot of transmission fluid comes out. But FYI, I have not drained my transmission fluid here. I'm removing the one remaining drive shaft bolt with my right hand, and then I'm gonna pull out the drive shaft with both my hands after that's removed. Wrap this up just like the shifter turret above, and hopefully you won't lose a lot of expensive transmission fluid. Next, you wanna remove your PCV valve tubes. If you don't have a turbo, this will just be a tube connecting your head to your intake manifold, in which case you don't have to remove it. But if you have a turbo, you have to disconnect this from your catch cans. But basically, you just wanna start removing all the major tubes and connections to your engine right now. If you have an aftermarket ECU, you're gonna have a vacuum tube here that you're gonna have to disconnect. If you have an OEM car, you're probably not gonna have a tube here, so don't worry about it. Next, I'm removing the vacuum tube from my blow-off valve. Again, if you don't have a turbo, don't worry about it. Take a ton of pictures before you start this project. Here are some sensors that have to be removed. There's one on top of the power steering pump. There's one on top of that. And follow this main engine harness all the way back, removing these electrical connectors. They're all unique, so you can't really screw it up. Take this little guy off. 
Once all the electrical connectors are removed, you can fold this harness up and out of the way near your windshield wipers. Remove your spark plugs and your ignition coils. There's some 10 millimeter bolts on here. Remove this electrical connector on your radiator fan. This clip you have to remove with a needle nose pliers from the back. I'm not going to show it here. There's this small electrical connector on the left side of your radiator. It's weird. You have to push up on this tab, not down. You can do it with your finger. Remove the overflow tube on the radiator. Remove your hood prop rod. It gets in the way of the radiator. Radiator brackets next. Remove your main radiator tube. You might have to perturb it with a large flathead to get it to want to come off your radiator. If you have an aftermarket coolant reroute, you have to remove this back side of the radiator hose as well. If you don't, it's all connected to the neck at the front of the engine and it should be fairly obvious how to remove the radiator tube. I have to remove all my intercooler piping. If you don't have a turbo, this is going to be your intake. For non-turbo, this would be your air box. Otherwise, it's intercooler piping. More intercooler piping on the driver's side. Remove your lower radiator hose from the radiator. I'm removing the intercooler piping on the passenger side. Again, only relevant if you have a turbo. At this point, the radiator should just slide right out, giving you a lot of extra room. Remove the air filter. One of the main radiator hoses connects to the engine block down here. I'm just using a pry bar to separate it. Just be careful that you don't damage the hose. If you have the normal coolant neck, these will be a couple of hoses that you have to remove. I'm removing mine using an AN aluminum wrench. Remove the bolts on top of this power steering bracket. Crack these 10 millimeter bolts loose on your water pump pulley. Remove this nut on the power steering tensioner. Loosen this bolt. Now remove this bolt in the back. Remove this bolt next. There are two or three bolts that you have to access through slots in the power steering pump pulley. You can spin the crank, which will in turn spin the power steering pump pulley with a 21 millimeter socket. Use a three ace because it's shallower. Align the slots in the power steering pump pulley with the bolts behind it. Once everything is loose, you can push this in and remove the belt. You're gonna be dropping a lot of hardware. Invest in a magnet. Remove these brackets. Now onto the alternator. Loosen this 12 millimeter bolt. Followed by the tensioner bolt. That's kind of hard to get to, but it's up here. At this point, you should be able to remove the alternator belt. There's a long bolt holding the power steering pump to the block. Once you remove the bolt, you can wiggle the power steering pump off. Zip tie it out of the way. Remove the top two AC compressor bolts. Remove the bottom two AC compressor bolts. These are either 12 or 14 millimeter. The compressor should be loose now. If you have a turbo, remove your oil return line. If you don't have a turbo, you can skip this step. The next step is to remove your alternator main wire connector. And it's kind of tricky. There are entire videos dedicated to how to remove this. Push on the side on the left of it, and you have to push pretty hard to get it to budge. 
remove this positive power terminal bolt. This white connector is the positive terminal that you just removed from the alternator. There's a pin connector connected to the oil pressure sensor and it has the yellow wire and then there's another one connected to the starter and that's another pin connector that you can pinch with a needle and those pliers to get it to come off. Next remove this large I think 12 millimeter power terminal from the starter. Remove the terminal from this bolt and make sure the harness is free. If you have a turbo, you have to remove your oil feed line. I'm gonna do that right now. If you don't have a turbo, you can skip this step. I think this is one of the last turbo only steps. I have to remove my coolant lines from my turbo. And also the oil feed line in the turbo. Remove your heater core supply and return lines. Try the prying technique or try to wiggle them or twist them a little bit. The heater core is really fragile and you don't want to break it. I have a flying Miata coolant reroute so I have to take off a couple of additional things. Moral of the story is remove both your heater core lines and if you have coolant lines for a turbo, remove those too. At this point, I have to remove the oil drain from my turbo. I'm not even gonna show it, it sucks. If you don't have to do this, be happy. Remove this ground strap on the right side of your engine. It's really important, don't forget about it. Don't forget about this PCV tube. Open your clutch master cylinder and extract the fluid using a turkey baster. I'm showing two things in this clip. There's a big electrical harness that goes around your transmission and it probably is in a, in a connector of some sort. You have to remove that and then the clutch line goes through that eyelet and you probably have to remove this line as well. If videotaping myself, taking a picture of vacuum lines doesn't show you how important it is, I don't know what does. You have to remove a couple vacuum lines on the side of the intake manifold. Just keep track of it taking pictures. Remove your throttle cable from your throttle body like this. Remove your throttle cable. It's just two 12 millimeter nuts. You loosen them and then you can pop them out of the bracket. This flare fitting on the clutch slave cylinder has to be removed. These three connectors have to be undone. I don't think the two white ones have polarity, but I mark them anyways. This green connector has to be removed and make sure this clip is off this metal post. Remove your clutch slave cylinder. I think it's just two 12 millimeter bolts. Remove these PPF bolts. Remove these three as well. You can either loosen or remove these. At this point, break your PPF from your transmission and zip tie your PPF off to the side through one of the holes in your shifter turret above. I tried to remove my PPF from my diff and I could not get the sleeve out. It is seized in, so I have to drop my PPF and my diff together and wrestle with it on the ground another day. 
Remove the nuts on your engine mount bolts. There are only two of them. This is number one. And this is number two. You also have to remove these side bolts on the mounts and mark them before you remove them so you know if it's the upper or lower hole. Here's the other side, there's one on each side. Free some of the clips on these fuel lines with a needle nose pliers. Next, you have to remove your main fuel line and you can use a 5 16 inch fuel disconnect tool. You can find this anywhere, AutoZone, Advance, they're cheap and they're easy to find. The first time you do this, it's going to be challenging. You want to keep it close and tight to the tube and get it inside of the outer sheath and then basically just pull up. You don't really have to separate it or anything. If you just pull up, it will release the clip inside and the fuel line will come apart. This is one of those jobs that takes 60 minutes the first time you try it and after the fifth time it takes you like three minutes. I found that a Schrader valve stem cap fits on the exposed metal fuel line and it should help cut down some of the fuel fumes in your garage. As you begin to lightly hoist the engine the engine mount bolts will become loose and you'll be able to either just push them out or tap them out with a wrench. At this stage, all I'm doing is lightly loading the engine and I went up and down a couple times before I, I got the right tension on it to get the bolts loose. I'm dropping it down a little bit here. It's a tight fit. I'm tapping it with a wrench. I used a crow's foot on the head of the bolt while tapping with the wrench and it came out easily. Now onto the passenger side bolt. This is an example of where I'm using the crow's foot to pry the head of the bolt. This is how easy it is to pry the bolt out. It just slides right out. Once you get some length on the bolt, you can just use it as a handle and pull it out with your hand. Two things to note, I have the hoist extended all the way to the lightest engine setting and I also have the spreader bar cinched up all the way and I'll show you why in a second. We have to lift this engine up pretty high to get it over the front radiator support. As you begin to lift the engine up, pay attention and make sure all of your wires and sensors are disconnected, all your tubes. You're probably going to forget something or there might be a sensor stuck somewhere and you don't want to break something expensive. As the engine lifts up, it becomes easier to check around it, so just take advantage of that. As the engine comes up, you have to pitch it backwards so it clears the transmission tunnel and the radiator support. That's what I'm turning right now, the spreader bar. The bottom portion of your engine mounts should have just fallen off. If you didn't remove those side bolts, they're going to get in the way. Mine just dropped on the floor. Sometimes they might be stuck. You might have to pry at them a little bit to get them to budge. But they'll get in your way if you don't remove those side bolts. As the engine moves up, start pulling it back. I'm gonna time lapse this one, I think you get the point. You just wanna keep going up, make sure it clears that radiator support and you don't hit anything. Obviously, just keep paying attention, make, make sure nothing's still connected and you have to basically push or pull the engine back as you're lifting it up and it'll slowly start to make its way over that radiator support bracket and your front bumper. And that's it, the engine's out. At this stage, I usually drop it on some tires and I disconnect the transmission from the engine. The transmission only weighs like 100 pounds, maybe a little bit less. And now the fun begins. Get it on an engine stand and see what's going on.